You want to hear something crazy? This is really, really, really crazy. The definition of God, according to different people's points of view, is different things. But the definition of God that I'm going to try to put into words is the definition of God, it seems, that Rabbi Noah Weinberg and Rabbi Moses Ben Maimon and the Bible itself tried to give to God. And that definition is beautiful, and it's also one that we don't believe. It's also one that Moses didn't believe. And he confessed that he didn't believe. So when it comes to talking about God, the very first problem is that everyone has a different definition. So I'm speaking now to people who have spent at least 10 hours engaged with my videos, my own conversations with them personally, um, my writings on the subject of God. The God that I'm referring to, the God that I'm referring to is pure chesed and pure truth. The God that I'm referring to means that everything should go wonderfully for you. And the only reason that it does not go wonderfully for you is because you don't believe in him. Not like some kind of smiting punishment, but basically, you know, if you believe that right is left and left is right, you've got to make a few wrong turns in life. The question of why we don't naturally believe in this, or to be more accurate, the question of how it's possible that supposedly, seemingly, deep down, we do all believe in this, but nonetheless act as if we don't believe in it, is a great theological question. Not for me right now, not my main concern. My main concern is the way Rabbi Noah Weinberg explained Moses, why Moses had to die. What was Moses' imperfection? His imperfection that even he, who could foresee the possibility of an absolutely miraculous, one-of-a-kind in human history, impossible to imagine occurring, rebellion, and exodus from Egypt, and eventually going into the good land and gaining all of God's instructions, and God being able to feed and water people in the wilderness for dozens of years. He was able to believe all that, but not everything. God at one point had to say, and this was at a moment where Moses was like at wit's end, and uh, God said, listen, tomorrow I'm going to give everyone so much food, they're going to have food forever. It's just tons and tons of animal. And Moses said, really? You're going to go? Moses was like, sarcastic. he believed, you know, but still. He said, uh, are you going to like catch all the fish in the sea? What's your, what's your plan here? <laughs> and God responds, uh, Hayad, God, Tiktsar, are you shortening the arm of God? The arm of God is, can encompass all. There's nothing it can't do. Later on, we talk about, in a number of these videos, the section read on Yom Kippur from Isaiah. Right thereafter, Isaiah says, Lo katsra yad Hashem yad God. The God, the hand of God is not, has not been shortened. It's your errors that are keeping you from receiving all of the goodness of God. Moses had so much belief in God that God allowed the greatest, most insane changes from the normal course of things up until that point to take place. 
However, God points out to Moses, you didn't entirely believe in me. You didn't entirely believe in kol tuvi, as it says, all of my goodness. I'll give you an example. The example was, I told you when the Jews had no water and they're dying in the desert. I put up a video here where I was in the desert right outside Mount Sinai where I was parched and there was no water because I hadn't had anything to drink in three hours, <laughs> right? But that gave me a, I made the video right there. It's called uh, Dear Jew Haters or something like that, which was on a separate subject. But the beginning of the video was, yeah, I get it. I get it. The Jews in the desert without having water, that was a thing. I could totally see why they could think that was a shitty thing and not believe in the ultimate goodness of existence. So Moses, the Torah says that God told Moses, speak to the stone. Tell the stone to give forth water, it'll do so. So Moses speaks to the stone, it does not give forth water. So he taps the stone with his rock, then it does give forth water. God provides that as an example of the fact that Moses' belief was not perfection. Moses' belief in the in the abilities that this world, this universe has for us, this Tao, that simply, that you shouldn't fight yourself. That Moses himself, Rav Noach points out, that, uh, you know, the Torah says, Yan ki tembi. That's what God says. You're going to have to die, you and Aaron, because you didn't believe in me. Lahakti sheni, to make me... To make me appear magnificent and special and different from everything else that people know of in existence. Everything that's accepted by the culture as that's the way things should be. I'm teaching you radical goodness, God says. Radical goodness. And uh, you slipped up slightly. Because I said speak to the rock. You spoke to the rock. It didn't give forth water. And then you hit it. Now why would Moses hit it? All the rabbis try to figure it out. Maybe he thought that he had misheard God. Well, that doesn't sound like a confident prophecy. And the Bible says Moses is the most confident of prophets. What would that even mean? But it had to be something like that, or he thought he saw the wrong rock. Or he thought that it was a test of some kind, because who can understand God's inscrutable will? He tells Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Then he says, don't sacrifice Isaac. It's just this crazy guy in the sky. That, of course, is not who God is. God is available to us. The Bible says, the Torah says, Moses says, in your mouths and in your hearts. It's right there. God made people straight. And they go and complicate things. So Moses knew that God was good. He knew God would give forth water. You don't go and hit a rock in front of all of your followers if you think it's not going to do anything. But he had some fear. Bear in mind, the Jews occasionally, every once in a while, gave him hell. And he thought like, hey, maybe if it doesn't work this time, maybe a rock is stronger. He was upset. He wasn't in the perfect mood. He wasn't in the state of perfectly believing in God's goodness. That suppose God knows the human mind. If the human mind is going to accidentally think it's this rock instead of that rock, or think that God's, you know, you have to trust God. Trust that the way you are is the right way. This is very easy to misinterpret, but I'm not talking to those people prone to misinterpreting things because... Because I believe in, I'm trying to believe in God. And if you believe in God, you're not focused on uh, the potential for getting bitten by some vermin. Instead, you're focused on the potential for reaching all the open and willing sons and daughters of God who, who are this close to understanding it and to teaching it to me and for us all to teach it to each other and make it a reality. That's an extraordinary, extraordinary thing in the Torah of Noah points out. That the Torah itself says about Moses, the giver of the Torah, that you didn't believe in me. God said, you didn't believe in me. 
You know why? Even though you believed for sure, you were absolutely confident the rock would give forth water. You don't hit a rock if you don't think it's going to give forth water in front of all of your people. But he believed there was something wrong. God did actually say speak to it. And whether he was confused about God's will or whatever else, there was a lack of trust in God. In the goodness, the trueness, the fact that there's no need for struggle. Now by these standards, obviously, I can say that I don't believe in God either. It's a problem. And the solution can't be push yourself to believe, push yourself to believe. That's the belief in some kind of insane God that wants you to trick yourself in some way. The solution has to be in truth, in goodness. It comes Bekol de Mamadaka in a soft, calm voice.